So if you're not already um, in a comfortable, balanced position for meditation, whether you're sitting, standing, reclining, I invite you to take up um, a suitable meditation posture and to do whatever helps your body to feel at ease, shift gears, and wind a little bit. There's often some combination of deepening your breathing and perhaps orienting to the space where you are, rolling your shoulders, your neck, just kind of allowing things to come to a place of stillness naturally on their own. Mm. In your own time, you can lower your gaze or even close your eyes and begin to turn your attention inwards as the body becomes still. And just beginning by doing nothing, just sitting or resting quietly. And perhaps inviting a little bit of relaxation into the muscles and tissues of your body. So you might check and see how's the face, your eyes, your eyebrows relax, the forehead, how's your jaw? Can you let your lips, your mouth be relaxed? It's just this invitation for things to, to be open, to be loose in the body. Imagining that your shoulders and back could relax like you are taking off a heavy backpack that you've been carrying all day. And all of a sudden there's this relief, this sense of lightness or ease as you put that burden down. The way we carry our stress around with us, our worries, our grief, anxiety. And what would it be like to just invite a certain kind of release, the temporary letting go or letting down inside. And we're not trying to force anything, it's just a suggestion to the body, an invitation. You notice yourself beginning to tighten or strain or push just with the association of meditating. You might try imagining a, a place where you feel very comfortable and relaxed, pleasant scene, soothing environment, comfortable chair. Well, sometimes it can help to feel the weight of your body resting on the ground. So just let your attention rest in your body and allow your body to be supported by the earth. So just attending to the process of arriving right here and now. Inviting any unnecessary tightness, tension, or holding to soften or relax even a little bit. using the weight of the body, or even the sensations of breathing, or the sounds around you. As a way of resting your attention, 
a thing to think about, figure out, accomplish, have, get, become. What if uh, you could connect with the present moment, a sense of ease and meditation as if you were slipping into a warm bath or under the cool sheets of a bed. A sense of entering something that welcomes you, that feels comfortable where there's nothing to do, or the purpose initially is to just relax, to just arrive. That's the tone that we're aiming for here at the beginning. It's a welcome, this restful, easeful settling. And so, of course, it's easier said than done. The mind doesn't know how to downshift, can't let go. It keeps planning or rehearsing or remembering, snagging on things, picking them up, getting entangled. So we use a structure, a technique to remember, to try to connect more fully at the present moment and allow things to come into balance, to gather and settle. So it's called shamatha practice, calm abiding. We use an anchor like the breath, sensations of the hands and the lap, weight of the body resting on the chair, the ground or even the sounds around you as they come and go. And there's this gentle encouragement to just feel and be with that one experience in its direct, immediate simplicity. Resting your attention lightly with an anchor, whatever feels accessible to you. And instead of making this into a project, struggle, another way we don't measure up, again, it's just this, this gift, a gift of time and space that we give ourselves to use that analogy of lying down for a rest or soaking in a bath. The mind wanders to do something stressful. We don't beat ourselves up. We just recognize, oh, that's silly. I'm here to enjoy myself, to just relax. And then we come back to the sensations, the warm water, soft, cool bed. So in the same way, if your mind veers off into something, when you notice, it's just the gentle letting go and a sense of gladness at being able to return and rest with the simplicity of 
just this one moment. Just this one breath, this one sound, this one sensation. Without even the slightest need to lean forward or make it work. So let's continue practicing like this quietly for a little bit. Resting your attention with an anchor. Receiving that experience. And whenever you notice the mind drifting, gently let go. Coming back, beginning again with ease, with kindness. There's pain or discomfort physically, mentally or emotionally. There's space for that. You don't need to try to make it go away, get into an argument with it. But for this phase of practice, the suggestion is to see as much as possible 
if you can let that be in the background, it's still there, but it's not what you're focusing on. And treat it like a TV that's on in the other room. You still hear it, but you're paying attention to something else. Conversation, book. And that something else is your anchor. The anchor is meant to be pleasant, if possible. And if that's not possible, then neutral. Take an interest in that experience. We get curious about it. We enjoy it. Simplicity of it, vitality of it. Like stroking a cat, you can just feel the movement softness or nothing else that's important in that moment. So this conscious breathing. Or any other anchor you're connecting with. Just that sense of connecting with the experience and then sustaining it. You reach out, you touch the cat, and you stroke it. Run your hand over its back or its belly. There's pleasure in it. There's, there's connection. It's kind of, kind of intimacy, a warmth, even a certain playfulness. Allowing ourselves to become enveloped in that experience of the anchor. Feeling it out, allowing it to unfold one moment at a time. This mode of practice is an art in and of itself with its own challenges, its own gifts, and even its own insight. Certain kind of understanding that develops how to put things down, how to begin again in a way that is lighthearted but persistent. gentle but firm. We even start to notice some of the patterns, conditioned habits of mind. What is it we keep going back to, getting stuck on? Where do we tend to get lost? And how do we unhook? Purpose of shamatha practice, purpose of concentration, samadhi, is not checking out, getting calm or feeling blissful just for its own sake. 
but rather empowering the faculties, the kind of inner eye of the heart to see and understand more clearly nature of suffering and deeper truths of being alive. And that application of the heart's vision, capacity to know and understand something, to see clearly with the heart. This is known as vipassana meditation, insight meditation, looking deeply into anything to understand its nature. And so there's a shift, there's a certain shift in the mode of practice. We shift from this kind of very directed, exclusive attention where we're putting everything down, we're just letting go and coming back again and again to a different kind of relationship with experience, one that is curious, one that wants to know and understand, that wants to examine very carefully, not with discursive thought or analysis, but more with a kind of inner vision or sense of gut knowing. certain humility, a kind of openness. So how do we do this? There are many ways. It's a creative process. But the essence is a certain kind of listening. And so one of the more accessible ways to begin to explore this is on the personal level the relative level of our own lives, our relationships, our personality. So not, the, not yet turning towards the deeper truths of the Dharma, but instead applying whatever amount of steadiness and concentration has accumulated to some problem or question or curiosity in our own life. Why did I get so upset when you said that to me? Or why is it so hard for me to go to bed the hour I want? I know I want to get more sleep. I always end up staying up so late. What's that about? So there's a sense of wanting to understand something wanting to see it, to know it more clearly. What's happening here? What's driving this? What's it about? How is this coming into being? What are the forces, the conditions that create it? And and as with any skill, it's encouraged to start with something that's not too difficult or overwhelming so that you don't just get flooded. So you might pose a certain question to yourself, to your heart, not because you're gonna think about it and figure it out, but because you're gonna listen to see what your heart already knows about it or what you can uncover that you might not have recognized. So if you'd like, I invite you to Bring to mind some situation, pattern, habit, issue that you would like to understand a little bit more clearly.
Again, just checking that it's not the most difficult, intense, painful, upsetting, worrying aspect of your life, looking for something that's more manageable. And so you bring this thing to mind. Just invite it here. And the most simple, basic question you might ask is just, what's this about? What can I learn here? And then to just listen. Allow your heart to be still. And to just observe whatever arises, thoughts, feelings, memories, without getting pulled into any of them, without having to make sense of it. Watching some strange movie. Your job is to just stay firmly planted in the here and now, holding your meditation seat, clearly aware. bearing witness to whatever arises. Notice yourself getting pulled into thought, analyzing, spinning stories. You just come back, feel the body, connect with the anchor, and then come back to that still, quiet listening. What's this about? What can I learn here? So this is one way of practicing, but it's not the deeper dharma. It's useful, it can be liberating in its own way. So if you like, if it's compelling, you can continue just exploring and listening with that particular theme or question. Or you can set that aside, just allow that to dissolve and fade. And take up one of the Buddha's instructions to cultivate the perception of impermanence, to notice how things change. And here too, there are many ways to do this. So you might just limit the focus of your attention to one particular sense door or experience like the breath or sound. Other things are still happening, but they're in the background, giving more attention, just as you did to the anchor, to this experience 
But instead of inclining towards a quality of rest and ease and kind of snuggling in with it, instead, there's a kind of incisive clarity that's fueled by a genuine interest. What is this? With an eye towards the process of change. To just observe how it keeps changing from moment to moment. You can also just do this with the flow of experience, letting anything and everything come and go thoughts, sensations, sounds, memories. Moment to moment, observing. Things arise and pass, come and go. Instead of focusing on the particular qualities of the experiences, noticing how they all change. Not trying to create something, instead we're observing. Trying to steady the heart and observe and know clearly how things change. We'll take the time we have left to just practice in this way. Maybe the mind is throwing up thoughts. Doesn't feel like anything's changing. All seems the same. Well, notice those thoughts. Notice how they change. Notice how they come and go. And you put down what you think you know and instead be open. Open to perceiving this life, this moment in a new way. few moments, we'll begin to shift out of the meditation. Or we do just taking a moment to step back a little inside and reflect on the time we've spent together so far and what, if anything, was useful for you. Not every instruction or suggestion is helpful. So to just evaluate, you know, what are you taking away? Anything you want to remember, come back to. And if so, just making a mental note of that. And then invite you to slowly begin to deepen your breath. Invite a little bit of movement into your body. Let your eyes open. Right. Thanks for joining me for that.